will talk about is what happens in the space, in the true space. I will talk about what happens in the firefighters world, in the military world. Uh, I will not talk about what will happen in the retail because the work we are doing is far from that world at the moment. And everything that are related to the smart textile development that we are doing is related to a very professional, very dedicated use. Uh, I, I, like the, um, uh, I like the view on seeing how the mobile phone was developed uh, into Internet of Things. And everybody knows that the mobile phone, that was known in the 13s in the car radio in the police in New York. It was brought into the firefighters' uh, uh, systems. It was brought into very professional, heavy radios that was used by businessmen in the 18 and the 19, coming up to the uh, smart uh, <coughs> uh, devices that we have today. Perhaps that will happen uh, also with smart textile development. But there's no guarantee. Uh, what, what I will go you through is hopefully things you haven't heard about before, um, giving you some inspiration of what Internet of Things might be in the future. Uh, you're very welcome to uh, go back to me. Uh, can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? I'll be here the most of the day. Uh, the area we are working in is on energy harvesting. You know, uh, every device is more or less need power. And power today is often batteries that are discrete. Uh, they are clumsy compared to the microelectronics. One of the areas we are trying is to see if we can develop fibers. It's a European project. Uh, power weave uh, making fibers that has uh, solar cells uh, uh, features and also fiber that has storage <coughs> feature. Why make things in a fiber form? We know cloth, basically it's yarn, it weaved structure. It's very, very, very uh, good material in terms of stretch, in terms of durability, flexibility, and the perspective of actually creating a fabric that is both uh, energy harvesting and storage fabric is that you can make a very large fabric, you can fold it, you can roll it, you can take it from the helicopter and drop it in Africa, and people can roll it out and have their television without installing a, a heavy uh, solar panel or a heavy uh, battery. So that's the perspective uh, in the uh, Power View project. Another area we are working a lot on is on protective clothing. I'll come back to that. Why is it uh, interesting in protective clothing? You have a lot of devices with you. They are in the belt, they are on the radio, they are in the helmet. However, people are often forgetting these things when they're going into operation. So having it unobtrusive uh, into the garment makes a more safe uh, environment uh, for these guys. And uh, that's the perspective of integrating electronics directly into suits, into uh, garments. We have made a firefighter suit, we have made a, a suit for fisherman clothes where uh, the emergency electronics is in the trouser. You can imagine you are never losing your trouser on a fisher boat, um, but you can easily forget your device if it's in the belt. Uh, then we are working on uh, fashion lighting and cabling, uh, more on the phototherapy devices, uh, more on, on large, to say, uh, textile screenings. Uh, and that's the field where we think uh, a, lot will thing, a lot of things will happen. It gives an opportunity to have uh, rollouts uh, where you can actually make uh, screens for <coughs> advertising and, and large illumination surfaces. Uh, the uh, challenging there is, uh, of course, the connectivity and the connector, and it's part of uh, what we are focusing on there. Then we are working in the middle, uh, medical area, um, and finally uh, the space. Uh, what was what is the link? What is the link between every every component here? The link is that uh, the competences needs to create circuitry in textile, the encapsulation of electronics to textile, 
the interconnects uh, in textile material, that's all uh, enabling technologies that are necessary for this to be able to manufacture in large scale, uh, um, able to wash, uh, able to handle in the normal way as we handle our clothes. And that's basically our expertise. This is a quite old picture, it's from 2007, but it's a very good example of how uh, wearable technology uh, can be integrated into a garment in a way so that you raise the safety. Uh, this is a suit uh, that has a early warning on heat stress. Heat stress is a phenomenon where the firefighter goes into operation. He will be exposed for a lot of heat, but he really don't know how much heat he has been exposed for and suddenly he have a physiological collapse simply because the body can't absorb uh, the, the heat that are inside and from the outside. So it's a way where you can make a protection uh, unit and it's all included into the suit. Uh, we are doing a development for the European Space Agency. Uh, the challenging is that the, the astronaut on the International Space Station, they are using a lot of time on exercising. They are exercising because they are more or less in a wheelchair. When they are under zero gravity, there are no, there are no force on their muscle. So they, moves, uh, move, uh, uh, they, they lose their muscle mass within 10 to 15 days if they are not exercising heavy, heavily. You can, uh, 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 it's, it's called the chicken syndrome, chicken leg. And uh, <clears throat> uh, of course then they need to exercise actually to avoid uh, the muscle atrophy. However, spending two to three hours in a mission where every minute costs millions of dollars. You can imagine if we can uh, create a tool that determine whether that training efficiency or they have trained too much, the time they can uh, then spend on uh, physiological experiments and scientific experiments is what much more valuable than <laughs> sitting on a fitness uh, center uh, 30,000 kilometers out uh, from Earth. Uh, we had the first contract in 2009 uh, where we uh, determined the muscle uh, activity by uh, two uh, parameters. One is the EMG signal. It's the electrical signal that is generated when the muscle is working. Uh, the other one is near-infrared spectroscopy. Uh, it's also known when you're hospitalized, you have it as a finger um, indicator. Uh, it put lights into your skin and find out how much oxygenation that there is in the blood. What we're doing is that we're doing the similar just uh, in and around the muscle. And these two parameters tell how much uh, work the muscle is doing. Uh, what we have combined it with in uh, the, a new contract is measuring the leg circum circumferences so that we can actually ensure that there are no uh, uh, muscle uh, that uh, de degenerates. All these things are put into a trouser that you wear. And now the good question here is, why do we have a cable? We are living in, the two, in 2015. Do we really need a cable? And the question, and the answer is yes, because on the space, sta space station, it's like a cavity. There are no way where uh, electrical signal can uh, radiate. So we need a cable uh, from the instrumentation uh, to monitoring screens. Uh, this is a device uh, <coughs> that is a spin-out of our uh, work for ESA. It's a device measuring uh, leg volume uh, and um, it's actually monitoring the accumulation of exceed fluid in the lower leg. Uh, this occurs at um, cardiovascular patients as a first indication of a potential heart failure. Uh, however, what what is necessary to do is to regulate uh, the drug uh, before they are really needed to go into intensive care. So this is a tool where you can uh, monitor people at home, have their data sent to the hospital, and on the hospital they can check uh, whether this patient needs a regulation of uh, theoretical medication. And if they do, they can award 
uh, intensive care uh, hospitalizations. The same phenomena is known for preeclampsia and pregnancy. About 5 to 10 percent of pregnancies end in a kind of preeclampsia, and the, the, the uh, indication is uh, expansion of the leg due to water, and that can happen in a few hours' time. So re it's, it's really a good indication of uh, these um, <coughs> physiological um, characteristics. It's transferred to a mobile phone, from the mobile phone to the cloud, from the cloud to something in the world. We don't know. <coughs> these are the components that are necessary to create smart textile, uh, conduct conductive textile cabling, true cables that are that has the uh, characteristics of um, uh, textile. It's you can bend it, you can stretch it, you can uh, wash it. Uh, however, it contains um, uh, wires that are uh, doable enough to uh, transport uh, power data signals. Uh, we have that in many variants. We have it uh, on uh, elastic version. We have it as a fashion cable you can use on headset. We had it as an integration cable on um, sensors. Uh, and we can also even create sensors uh, in textile material by weaving or knitting. Um, <coughs> besides the, the product that enables conductivity and interconnects, we are heavily involved in designing electronics that fit uh, to clothes. You can imagine that you have a, if you have a clumsy PCB board, rigid PCB board, it doesn't really fit to your clothes. However, if you're about just a, a little smart, you can create a stretchable electronic board, or you can create a bendable electronic board that are compatible. That's an area where we are, we are trying to put a lot of focus. Um, on the encapsulation side, this is an area uh, that is, uh, of course, necessary. Uh, all electronics exist in their world, textile exists in their world, but we need to encapsulate uh, electronics and integrate it into a garment. Uh, finally, we end up uh, with uh, apps. Uh, we, we are doing apps. We are not the world best, but uh, we can demonstrate and uh, uh, make applications that are very uh, fundamental. We, we are not focusing at all of, of what happens uh, with the data. So that is your guy who will uh, be able to, to take that. <coughs> uh, one of the things we have learned is to um, um, make fabrics uh, where we can outbreak uh, wires so that we can really contain or maintain the fabric characteristic, the strength, uh, the flatness, the surface, uh, but have outbreakers of wires, which means that we can easily mold small electronic components without necessarily having a lot of uh, housing around the electronics. Uh, we can simply do that in a very thin uh, format because we have the uh, substrate, uh, the textile substrate as, as the carrier. Uh, we include um, washable connectors into our product for the portfolio. Uh, washable connectors uh, need to be thin. They need to be easily removable so that you don't put a lot of stress on your textile. And you can imagine that it doesn't really fit with, with these jacks uh, in, in textile. They, they, they <laughs> give a lot of discomfort. So it's about creating a, a, a connector in a flat form. We, 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 are, fact, we are actually the, the only f company in the world that can make this uh, flat form connector. And hopefully it can be standard for how uh, electronic can be interconnected uh, in, in textile. We can, however, also uh, utilize uh, normal uh, Interfaces like USB, uh, DAX, uh, or even proprietary uh, connectors uh, by overmolding the textile with uh, with uh, soft material. 
these are an overview of some of the elements encapsulation of in, in the integration. It's sensors, it's uh, sensor and garment integration. Uh, just to follow up with which area moving uh, for, um, uh, for smart textile, it's a uh, fashion application. Uh, Francisca will give a very good example of that later. Uh, it's um, cabling that has another attitude like, uh, like rubber. Borrowing rubber, why not have smart textiles, uh, nice bendable textiles. And then, of course, in the spare, uh, sports apparel, uh, where people are exercising and have a lot of uh, tracking on that. Okay. That was my presentation. Thank you. Thanks very much, Christian.